Howdy everybody, welcome back to Accounting 1101, where in our video today we're going to be talking about the expanded accounting equation. Now I say that and it might throw up a red flag and I say, well wait a second, I already learned the accounting equation and now you, you kind of stroll in and tell me there's an expanded accounting equation. Well, I apologize, sometimes what happens in accounting when we're learning is we learn a basic concept and then we add a little bit more to it as we go along. In fact, that happens quite a bit in accounting. So bear with me and I will show you and explain to you our expanded accounting equation. Now, if the words accounting equation don't ring a bell, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you may need to go back and do a little bit of work and look at our lecture video on the accounting equation. Go back to the reading in chapters one and two because as we've talked about, Literally, everything in accounting revolves around that accounting equation. It is imperative, super important, that you understand the components of the accounting equation. So, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, right? When we talk about assets, we're talking about stuff a business owns. That is going to be equal to who has a claim to it, a creditor, in the form of a liability against the business or an owner of the business as represented by equity. So we've talked about that. We've talked about how the balance sheet is our financial statement that shows our accounting equation in statement form, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. What we haven't really talked about is what about profits? We know we also have an income statement. It shows revenue minus expenses equals net income. So how does that play into the accounting equation, our profits that we earn? That, my friends, is where the expended, the expended, the expanded accounting equation comes into play. You can see right here we have our regular accounting equation, but now we've introduced a little bit beneath the equity part. So we know equity means ownership, the owner's claim to the assets of the company. There are two parts to equity, the parts that owners have invested themselves, contributed capital, which in a corporation is in the form of common stock. But there's another component to equity called retained earnings, the amounts the company has earned in profit that have been retained by the company, haven't been spent, haven't been distributed back to the shareholders in the form of a dividend yet. Okay, so equity has two components, contributed capital and earned capital, amounts the company has earned. Of course, the amounts the company has earned, revenues minus expenses, right? So that's how our income statement ties into the balance sheet, through retained earnings, because our revenues and expenses flow through to retained earnings, a process we'll talk about when we get to closing entries, all right? So that's the expanded accounting equation. The important part, the big part, assets equals liabilities plus equity. Still there. Still as important as it ever was. But now we have an understanding that equity consists of amounts contributed by the ownership of the company, common stock, or capital, if we're talking about a sole proprietor or partnership. And then we have retained earnings, amounts that have been earned by the company, profits, and retained, retained profits, if you want to think of it like that, which consists of revenues minus expenses. All right. So let's take that from a T account standpoint. We've learned about T accounts and we've talked about debit and credit. Debit is the left side of account, credit is the right side of account. We can see the different categories here, assets, liabilities, and equity. What this shows you is what side of the account these different accounts go up on. Asset accounts always go up on the debit side or the left side. On the credit side, they go down. They decrease. On the other side of the account equation, it's kind of flip-flopped. You can see liabilities, common stock, revenues go up on the credit side. They decrease on the debit side. Expenses increase on the debit side, decrease on the credit side. So we're going to start making transactions in our next video. 
And we're going to learn how to journalize transactions. When we get to that point, you have to know how to make an account go up or down. You got a transaction involving cash coming in the door. How do I make the cash account go up? Well, the cash account is an asset account. It goes up on the debit side. So you may want to print off this slide or write it down, the information that you're seeing here because it's stuff that you're going to have to refer back to until you have it memorized. Your friend, Professor Martin here, I've been in the game for 20 plus years, a long time. Back when I started in accounting, the hairline was like right here. Now it's way up here. I've been around y'all. I have all this memorized. It's not that I'm super smart. It's just that I've been doing it for a long time. So until you get to the point where you have it memorized, you're going to need to print off this information or have it bookmarked in your book so you can refer back to it so you know what side of the account makes an account go up or down all right the side an account goes up on is the normal balance side so when we're looking at an asset account the debit side the normal balance side we're looking at a liability account the credit side is the normal balance side you'll hear me talk about normal balance quite a bit in accounting. So our balance sheet, we have assets, we have liabilities, we have equities. Those accounts live on the balance sheet. On our income statement, we have revenue, gains, expenses, losses. Those accounts live on the income statement. Accounts aren't shady. They're not like that shady dude that has a secret family maybe in another town and he goes and visits and he has two different homes. Not how accounting works. Accounts live in one place and they are faithful and they stay in that one place. Balance sheet accounts stay on the balance sheet. Income statement accounts stay on the income statement. They don't go back and forth. They have one family and they are faithful to that family and they stay in their home. All right. Next up, we're going to finally start looking at transactions and learning how to analyze them. We're going to start by putting transactions into the accounting equation so you can see how transactions impact our accounting equation. Then we're going to take the training wheels off, y'all, and then we're going to start recording transactions in a journal. That's really what happens in the real world when we do accounting. We start by putting a, the transaction in a journal. Then it gets copied or posted over to the ledger account individually. So that's where we're going in our next two or three videos. We're going to talk about analyzing using it, the accounting equation. Then we're going to journalize transactions. We're going to post them. It's going to be a flurry of accounting activity. I'm way too excited. I'm way too amped up to do accounting with you all and show you how it works. We will get to that in the next couple of videos. Hope to see you back here for those. As always, if you have any questions, if you need help, you know where to find me. Feel free to reach out. We can email, we can chat, we can Zoom, whatever you want to do and whatever helps you learn accounting is good with me. Until next time, take care, everybody.